Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and this video is all about routing in React. We're going to be covering the brand new, not even released yet, React Router V6. And that sort of will be the path forward for both the V5 version of React Router, but also Reach Router, which has sort of become the, the de facto router to reach for, no pun intended, um, over the past couple of years. But they're coming back together again, and the upgrade path will be using this. We're going to be creating a much, much uglier version of this Nike sneakers launch page where we'll be showing a few of the upcoming sneakers and then we'll be able to click into them and route to a details page for each one of the individual sneakers. I've got a Create React app going with uh, not much going on right now. I have installed into the package.json file the alpha version of the v6 react router and react router dom which is all you need to get going with these two so by the time you're viewing this video they might have done the full release hopefully not much has changed because um, i'm going to be covering pretty sort of fundamental concepts used within react router if we go into our app we don't have much going on at all right now it's just the app component is returning a div that says app that's why we see this beautiful text here. This is app. And I've created some dummy data with uh, three of those shoes from the launch page that we're going to be showing. So the first thing we'll, get, we'll do to get going is we will start to import some components from React Router DOM. The first one we want to import is the browser router. And we'll just give it an alias of router. So it's a little bit shorter to type. And this is where you want to put um, high up in your React application because all of the routing will sort of get nested with inside of it. So we'll replace this div here being returned and we'll put the router inside. So I could still say hello there with inside the router and it should render that, but it's, it's got no routes yet. So the first thing to do will be to add some routes to it. So We'll import the routes component and we'll put the routes inside of the router. So they don't have to be nested right inside of it. You can have them at different places of your application, but here I'm just going to put them right inside. And you may be wondering, well, Lee, what do you put in the routes? You put a route. All right, so we'll do that here and we will have our route. So a route needs to know sort of what route or what path in the URL to look for. So we'll tell it here, we're gonna be looking for the slash, which is the home. And we need to tell it what element to render when it encounters that path. So we will render out a home component that does not yet exist, but we'll create that right here, just a functional component called home, which will return, um, how about a div, with an H1 that says welcome home, like that. So if we go back to our app, the router is now rendering out welcome home because it encounters the home uh, route. If I were to go to something else, it doesn't yet know how to handle any other paths, but we can deal with that right now. So next up, what I want to do is build a nav that will start to link to these different pages I'm creating. So I can put those just out front of the routes like this. I'm gonna create a nav and I wanna put some links inside of it. So I'll import the link component like this. And you have to tell it where you want to link to. So this would be creating the equivalent of an A tag that has an href attribute or prop. So this one will be, will be going home like this. And now we have this nice nav up here that takes us home, which is the only page we have right now. So let's start to add some additional pages. And to do that, we will create additional routes. So let's create a route that covers uh, launch. You don't need to add the slash here. It's optional, but we're going to have it when it sees launch, it will render the element called um, launch. Like this and we need to go and create the launch component. So launch component, what we'll do is, for now we will just put a div that says an h1 of launch, 
Oops, I have to return, right? Just like that. And we will add into our nav a link that takes us to launch page. So now I've got two pages in the app. I've got launch takes here. React Router knows to render the launch component when it sees that path up here, or we can go back home and back and forth. So what I want to do now is I want to render out some of the shoes on this launch page. And there's a couple ways I could go about doing that, but I'm going to cover a concept which is called nested routes. And that's where you sort of have one part of the page that stays constant as you're clicking around and a child part of it is what's changing content. So say I want to have this launch H1 both on the index page but also on the detail page. I can do that with nested routes where I don't have to repeat this H1 in both. It will just sort of get reused. It's like a parent-child relationship. So to do that, you can Instead of uh, having route as a self-closing component, you can nest routes inside of it, hence the nested routes. And the first one, first one we're going to be creating will be the slash. So we already have a slash, right? So where does this slash take us? It's sort of saying um, it, it, it inherits the paths from its parent. So it would be sort of the home page of the launch path. And this will render a component called launch index, which we will need to create like that. So why don't I come down to the launch index that will be created? Okay. And inside of the launch index, we will be returning um, a UL where we will render out all of the shoes on here. So I've got my shoes down here in this in this const. So what I need to do is convert sort of this object into each of the entries that it has. So I'm going to be using object.entries for that, for shoes. And that gives us an array that we can map over. So we'll here create this and we'll have our function that's called for each of these. And what this gives us is an array with two elements, one being the key, so we'll call that the slug, and the other one being the value for each of these entries. So we've got a name and an image, so we will uh, destructure that out to have name and IMG. And what do we want to render for each of these entries? We want to render out an LI, a list item, and we'll give it a key so it knows um, what's what. So it knows what's unique and uh, helps with re-rendering. And then so each of these LIs will contain maybe an H2 that has the name. Just save that so I get some formatting going on. And then we'll put an image in here as well. So image SRC, which will have this image, this image down here. And we'll give it an alt of the name and we'll give it a title to, nah, alt's good I think, right? just like that. So we'll come back here, we'll go to launch and we would expect basically since we're at the, the home of the, the launch page, the index or the root of the launch page, for it to render out the launch index and it's not doing that. And the reason is with nested routes, you sort of need to tell the parent uh, page that is rendering, in this case launch, to, to render the matching children that it encounters. So the way you do that is by importing a component called the outlet. So we'll take outlet here, and now we can go into the launch and use this outlet component. And what this is basically saying is render out any of the matching children that you find. So we're inside launch, we're controlling this with the launch component here. But when you encounter a matching child, in this case, the sort of the root inside of launch, um, outlet will render the matching child. So in this case, it will render out the launch index. So coming back, we now have, um, this is coming from the launch component. The outlet is rendering the matching child. 
which is taking all the entries from our shoes object and it's looping through them, iterating over them, um, using the map function where it's showing the uh, H2 and the image for each. So why don't we create now the ability to link into each of these shoes. So to do that, we will wrap, um, actually let's create the route first and then we'll link to that route. So we're going to create a route, we'll give it a path and we'll leave that blank for now, but we want it to render out, uh, we'll call it the launch shoe, like that. And this doesn't exist yet, so it's giving me an error. But what path do we want to match? What we really want is to match sort of either Air Jordan 3, Valor Blue, Jordan Mars 270, London, etc. And you can't really hard code these, right? Because they're dynamic parts. Um, what we want to do is tell it to look for a placeholder value. So we do that by saying colon slug where slug will be the placeholder matching any value that it finds. So we need to go create the launch shoe component, function launch shoe, and then we will return a div that says um, shoe, like that. So we need to link to this page, so why don't we come up here and we'll wrap a link to um, around our entire, uh, the contents of the LI, so both the H2 and the image. And we'll tell it to go to slash launch slash then the slug of the shoe, like that. So we come back here, they're now linkable. I can click into them and it's showing, it's matching sort of dynamically the slug that I have up here, it's saying shoe. I can go back and I can click a different one and it also renders the shoe. But to actually go and grab the details of the specific shoe that it is supposed to be rendering out, I need to access the slug portion. Then I can use the slug to go, if this were like a bigger app, I would make an API call or a GraphQL call to the back end to return me the shoe details. But in this case, I'm going to be using the slug to look that shoe up in the shoes object I have. So to grab that slug, we need to import a hook. And this hook is called useParams. And useParams lets you access the dynamic params that your routes may have. So we'll go down into the launch shoe component. And we'll say const something is equal to useParams. And so what we're grabbing from there is the slug. So I could come down here now and, and just uh, sort of print out the slug. So now I can see that I'm on the Jordan Mars 270 London page or the, the Valor 3 Blue page, etc. Now what we can do is use this slug to go and access the correct shoe from this shoe's object. So we'll say the shoe is equal to the shoes at the slug and it may not find one right, so let's just check for that. So if there's no shoe found, we will return an H2 This is not found, like that. But if we get to this point, that means we've found the shoe. So let's um, grab the, the properties we want from it, the name and the IMG um, from the shoe that we found. And then we can go inside of this uh, div and we can do a, an H2 showing the name and then an image with the image and alt with the name like that. And if it worked, we are showing the shoe. So we go back to the launch page, we can pick a different one, this racer blue, click into it, and we're seeing this racer blue. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show today. I think in about 10 to 15 minutes, we've covered most of the topics, there are some more um, maybe advanced ones where, for example, you don't have to use this component approach. There's a hook called, uh, I think it's called use routes that allows you to define the routes using an object format. But I sort of like this, it feels reacty, I guess you could say. I don't know if that's a word, but it feels reacty. But we covered, I think most of the topics you need to get going. 
Um, maybe the only one we didn't cover is how to handle sort of page not founds, uh, routes that don't match. I didn't plan for this, so we'll give it a go anyways, though. So let's say you want to define like a catch-all for when it doesn't match any of the previous routes. And you do that by saying star. So we'll create an element called not found like this. And so sort of it tries to match the home page. No, it can't match launch either. So finally it matches the star for element for everything. And we'll just create this uh, not found component here that will return, uh, say a div that has an H1 not found paragraph. Sorry, your page was not found. Okay, let's try it out. So if we were to go home and go to something it doesn't understand, it catches that using the star route and it renders the not found component. We go here to launch and we can click into the different shoes like that. Now, what if it can't find the shoe? I also have it saying not found and I did this not using, not really using React Router, but using uh, checking whether I was able to find a shoe. So if you were getting the data from an API, you may look for uh, say like a 404 response from the server when requesting that shoe's details and you could either redirect to a not found page or you could just render out um, some content that lets the, the user know that no shoe was found. So just to quickly review the topics covered today, React Router v6, it's coming out shortly. I'm recording this in uh, beginning of March 2020. We covered the router, the browser router. This is the top level component where all of the routes and the links will go inside. Routes is like a wrapper which will contain individual routes inside of it. A route basically tells React Router when you see a certain path, render a certain element. And we allowed, um, we gave our app the ability to have nested routes where we sort of have a parent router, sorry, not a parent router, a parent component, sort of like a layout that will render children inside of it. So in this case, it would be looking for like launch uh, root page or launch dynamic slug page. And the way we got our layout or our sort of parent using when using nested routes to render the children is by using the outlet. That brings us down to use params. So when you do have a dynamic portion of your of your path, you can use use params to access that slug value. So we did that down here by saying use params, extracting out the slug. That allowed us to look up the shoe from our shoes object and we could show its details. The last thing we covered quickly was a catch-all path. So a star to, to tell the user not found. I had no matching path for whatever you're trying to access. That's it for today's video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.